This video is about physician specialties. Let's follow a patient as she encounters each physician specialty. The patient is a 20-year-old woman who is walking downtown when a car jumps the curb and hits her. The EMS team finds her unconscious, but her pulse, blood pressure, and respirations are stable. The patient is taken by ambulance to a nearby level one trauma center. In the emergency room, typical trauma care is provided starting with the ABCs, which are airway, breathing, and circulation. A physical exam is performed and an ultrasound is used to assess for internal bleeding. In addition, labs are drawn. Emergency medicine is a field which provides urgent and emergent health care. Emergency medicine often treats trauma victims, so the ER environment is often fast-paced and intense. One benefit of working in the ER is the shift work, meaning that your day has a defined start time and end time under normal circumstances. The stereotype of an ER physician is that they are adventurous and the outdoors type. The ER physician suspects that the patient has a traumatic brain injury, so he consults the neurosurgery team. In addition, the trauma surgeons are already assessing the patient. A STAT, meaning emergent, head CT scan is ordered to determine the extent of damage. Radiology is a field which takes images of the insides of the body. Radiologists spend most of their time working in a dark room with the lights out, interpreting digital black and white images. The stereotype is that radiologists are well paid and have a high quality of life. There are several fields related to radiology. Interventional radiology uses real-time imaging to perform procedures such as a biopsy. Radiation oncology uses radiation energy to kill cancer cells. The head CT scan confirms that the patient has a traumatic brain injury and needs emergent neurosurgery. In the operating room, the bleeding is controlled. In addition, pressure buildup in the skull caused by bleeding is relieved through decompression. Surgeons perform operations which involve cutting or entering the body for a variety of reasons. Usually, the surgeon sees a patient in the clinic before the, before the surgery is performed in the operating room. There are numerous surgical subspecialties. The stereotype of surgeons is that they are confident and outspoken. However, because they have a difficult job with long hours, they are often stressed. There are many subspecialties of surgery. ENT stands for ear, nose, and throat surgery. Ophthalmology is concerned with the eye, and orthopedics is concerned with bones and muscles. Surgery requires anesthesia, which is managed by an anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologists mostly work in the OR. They typically put patients to sleep before surgery and then monitor the patient and vital signs during the operation. The main stereotype of an anesthesiologist is that they are calm and quiet during the procedure, while the surgeon is the dominant force in the operating room. The patient undergoes several successful surgeries and is transported to the post-anesthesia care unit, or PACU. The patient is then transferred to the shock trauma ICU. Over the course of the next several days, the patient receives additional surgery for her limb injuries. After two weeks in the shock trauma ICU, the patient is stable enough to be transferred to what is known as the floor. The floor is for patients in stable condition. Our patient was transferred to the floor because her vital signs were stable, because she could breathe without a ventilator, and she could even eat solid foods and drink liquids on her own. A hospitalist or internist is now managing her care. Internal medicine is the field for general adult medicine. It is the largest medical specialty and has many subspecialties. The stereotype of internists is that they are smart, hardworking, underpaid, and underappreciated. Here are some specialties within internal medicine. Cardiology manages the heart. Nephrology manages the kidneys and associated structures. Pulmonology manages the lung. Rheumatology manages the joints. While on the floor, if the patient were to have a complex problem, such as a seizure related to the traumatic brain injury, then the hospitalist could consult with neurology, who would see the patient and then write a note about how to manage the seizures. After a long hospital stay, the patient recovered from the acute trauma and was discharged home.
The patient is no longer considered an inpatient, they are now an outpatient. So they will go to clinics during working hours to receive care. Rehabilitation medicine or physiatry works with physical and occupational therapy to help patients using therapeutic exercises and pain management. Our patient will need rehab to recover from the traumatic brain injury, the limb injuries, and the prolonged hospital stay which caused muscle wasting. Psychiatry is the field which manages mental disorders as well as drug addiction. Because the patient developed post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD due to being hit by a car, psychiatry will play an important role in her care. Neurology is the field which manages disorders of the nervous system. Because our patient had a seizure related to her traumatic brain injury, neurology will be able to help her with this problem. The stereotype of neurology is that neurologic disorders are difficult to treat and this is often viewed negatively by other physicians. Now it's two years later, let's see how our patient is doing. Our patient is now 22 years old and is at the family medicine clinic for an annual doctor's visit. She is also pregnant, so the family doctor is referring her to an OBGYN. Family medicine is similar to internal medicine. Family physicians treat patients of all ages and manage medical conditions of all sorts. When further expertise is required, the family physician will refer the patient to a specialist. The stereotype of family medicine is that it is a difficult job because a broad knowledge base is required. In addition, they are underpaid and often underappreciated. At the OBGYN clinic, the physician performs prenatal screening to determine if the fetus is at risk for certain disorders such as Down syndrome. OBGYN stands for obstetrics and gynecology. Obstetrics relates to pregnancy, and gynecology relates to female organs such as the uterus and ovaries. Unlike male organs, female organs have higher rates of cancer, so gynecologic oncology, or gynonc, is the field for treating cancer of female organs. The stereotype of OBGYN is that it is an unpredictable lifestyle because childbirth could happen at any time. In addition, pregnant women often have many legitimate complaints and lawsuits occur when pregnancies have bad outcomes. At a follow-up OBGYN appointment, the physician tells the patient that the screening test was positive, meaning that the fetus may be at risk for Down syndrome. The patient is then sent for prenatal genetic counseling, where she is counseled about the risk of her baby having Down syndrome. In addition, she is given three options for further assessing the risk of Down syndrome. Molecular genetics is a field which focuses on the management of genetic or hereditary disorders. It is a cutting edge medical specialty. The patient decides to have the cell-free fetal DNA test because it is a non-invasive test unlike the other two. This test involves collecting the patient's blood, then the fetal DNA is extracted and analyzed to determine the risk of Down syndrome. Thankfully, the result indicates that the fetus has a low risk of Down syndrome. Several months later, the patient delivers a full-term healthy boy. Pediatrics is a specialty which manages the care of individuals 18 to 21 years and younger. Pediatricians have many of the same subspecialties that internal medicine has, such as cardiology, but there are some unique subspecialties such as adolescent medicine. The stereotype of pediatrics is that patients are cuter, however, physicians are underpaid and some physicians struggle with seeing sick children on a daily basis. Let's now jump forward one year. The patient is now 23 years old and complains of fatigue, weakness, night sweats, and sadness. Labs show decreased hemoglobin and an elevated white blood cell count. The family medicine physician is concerned about leukemia and refers the patient to a hemonc or hematology oncology physician. At the hemonc clinic, a bone marrow biopsy is performed and the specimen is sent to a hematopathologist for review. Pathology is a miscellaneous field, best described as laboratory medicine. Pathologists tend to work in labs analyzing specimens from patients. Many pathologists do not see any patients, so pathologists work behind the scenes in the hospital. The stereotype of pathologists is that they are introverted, quiet, thinking, smart, and many have research backgrounds. Pathology has many subspecialties, including blood banking, chemistry, forensics, and microbiology. 
The patient is diagnosed with B-cell acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or BALL, which is cancer of the white blood cells. The hemonc physicians treat the patient with chemotherapy. However, the cancer does not go away. Therefore, the physicians consider using the first FDA-approved genetic therapy. Physician scientists tend to be individuals with both a medical degree, such as an MD, and a research degree, a PhD. They tend to split their time between the hospital and the research lab. Physician scientists develop new diagnostic tests and new treatments, such as genetic therapies. The stereotype is that they are very smart and often become the chairman of their department. The genetic therapy that this patient received is known as a CAR T-cell therapy, which was designed to attack cancer cells with the CD19 molecule. This therapy was created by collecting the patient's T-cells. Then the T-cells were genetically modified to attack CD19. Then they were reinfused into the patient. Thankfully, the BALL cancer goes into remission after treatment. Now, let's imagine that our patient had a small skin lesion. Which specialty could remove this lesion? Depends on the lesion, but it is possible that all three specialties and even others could remove the lesion. While this may sound strange, the procedures performed by physicians can overlap. Now, let's discuss dermatology. Dermatologists treat skin disorders. In the US, dermatology may be the most competitive medical specialty. The stereotype is that dermatologists are well paid, have a high quality of life, and typically have an easier job than the other medical specialties. Here's a question which may stump you. Blood banking is a subspecialty. So which specialty training would allow you to subspecialize in blood banking? The answer is all of the above and more. Blood banking is the most open subspecialty in all of medicine, meaning that many specialties qualify as a prerequisite for blood bank training. Usually, in order to subspecialize in a particular field, there is only one specialty which will qualify as the prerequisite. Here is information about the rank of physicians. Medical students must complete four years of training before becoming a physician. Then they become residents, then fellows, and then attendings that need minimal supervision. Then they become section chiefs, and finally, they can become a department chair. The training process is complex and is outlined as follows. Physicians can have one of three degrees which are needed to practice medicine, the MD or allopathic degree, the DO or osteopathic degree, or the MBBS degree, which is a foreign medical degree. Physicians must be licensed by the state they practice medicine in. If they are not licensed, they are practicing illegally. Board certification is optional. Physicians have three duties clinical work, teaching, and research. If a physician does all three well, they are considered to be a triple threat. Physicians distinguish themselves from one another based on publications, books, and grants. In the hierarchy of publications, a clinical trial is seen as the most prestigious. Physicians work alongside non-physicians, such as nurses, medical laboratory scientists who work in pathology labs, allied health professionals, and pharmacists. Please note that the following are not physicians. These include chiropractors, pharmacists, and psychologists. Alternative medicine may be practiced by a physician or a non-physician. So that is the overview of physician specialties and related information. Thank you for watching.